Welcome to the Canon J21A by 7.8 B f1.8 lens review. Test 1, general image quality with an optical correcting adapter, Super 16 mode. This test is with the Canon J21A by 7.8B f1.8 with a 1.1 times optical corrector. This is wide open with no doubler in Super 16 mode. Good resolution. Bit of ailing flare. Not too bad on the aberrations. And you can notice the uh, slight, uh, approximately half a step drop in, um, in exposure at the end of the zoom range. That's the last 20% of the zoom range approximately. And that's the field of view at its widest and it has full coverage with the 1.1 times optical adapter way more zoom in than the Canon J16 which I tested earlier good detailing and texture for wide open but definite improvements once it's stopped down very shallow depth of field with the long zoom range Dropping down to f2.8 now. Drop a filter and adjust exposure. Veiling flare slightly uh, corrected. But it's still there a little bit. You don't get that drop off in uh, light at the end of the zoom range when you stop down past f2.8. 
that's just for when you're wide open. Nice detail, absolutely usable. Zooming out uh, gives a bit more detail as full zoom at low f-stops um, has a slightly shallow depth of field and a slightly hazier image but zooming out 10% really increases the detail able to be captured. It also has a really fast snappy servo zoom uh, which is great for a 21 by zoom ratio. Dropping down to f4. Still a little bit of veiling flare, but this is a particularly challenging lighting situation to uh, shoot into. Uh, zooming out cleans up the veiling flare considerably and very fast once you zoom out uh, 10 to 20%. This is a particularly challenging lighting situation with a window and a panel light pinging the lens. But the lens is um, performing quite well for an SD lens. In large part uh, because of the optical corrector uh, helping with all the aberrations. And plenty of sharpness there and detail at f4. Good control of flaring at the window. Uh, switching on the doubler at f4. We lose a bit of contrast and we get some veiling flare. Uh, we lose a lot of contrast actually with the veiling flare. That is pretty typical of using a doubler on a B4 lens. Dropping down to f8. Good detailing. You lose a little bit of contrast when looking into uh, light sources hitting the lens, um, but zooming out slightly clears that up a lot. And you still have good detailing, um, even when shooting into light sources, which is good. And the contrast comes back quite fast when you zoom out a little bit from full zoom. Nice and sharp at f8, as most of the lenses are. Most of the, most of the lenses clean up uh, at 2.8 and have best performance at 4, but are absolutely usable at 2.8 with an optical corrector. Dropping in the doubler at f8, again losing a lot of contrast there, but it's useful and it's there.
general image quality in Super 35 mode using an optical correcting adapter. Okay, so we're capturing in Super 35 4K and as you can see we've got a very large veiling flare and uh, because we're using the doubler the veiling flare is more prominent um, while using the doubler to cover the Super 35 sensor. But we're getting uh, decent sharpness from wide open, which is good. Dropping down to 2.8 and dropping a filter. Still got lots of veiling flare because of the doubler and it clears up a little bit as you zoom out. Some people might like the veiling flare, uh, some people might not. It's a personal preference, uh, but it definitely reduces the contrast a bit. Again, this is particularly challenging lighting situations, shooting into a window and a bright light uh, that's pinging the lens. So given the challenging lighting situations, the lens is performing well. Dropping down to f4, still got the veiling flare, good sharpness, good detailing. Lots and lots of uh, zoom range with this Canon 21 by um, Good sharpness at minimum focusing distance. Dropping down to F8, bumping ISO and dropping a filter. Veiling flare still sticks around at F8 just because the doubler is engaged, but um, contrast is slightly improved and detail is excellent F8 as expected. Excellent detail at F8 there.
test 3, vignetting and coverage, Super 35 capture, first with an optical correcting adapter. So this is Super 35 with no doubler on, with a slight expansion because we're using the um, 1.1 times optical adapter. Engaging the doubler and it almost covers a tiny bit of vignetting but because we're recording in 4k you could trim those corners um, and get a larger than 1080p image. Test 3 part 2 vignetting and coverage Super 35 capture this time with just a basic pass-through adapter. So that's without the doubler engaged. Super 35 4K. And that's the coverage you can expect without the doubler. And we need to engage the doubler to get um, better coverage. And we don't get as good a coverage as before without the extra 1.1 times magnification. Uh, but it's very close and you could get away with cropping in and you'd still end up with a larger than 1080p uh, image size once you cropped off the vignetting. Test 4, budget adapter image quality, using a basic pass-through adapter, Super 35 capture in 4K. This is the Super 35 test of the Canon 21x uh, 7.8, f1.8. This is without a doubler. And now the doubler's on. This is with no optical correcting adapter and um, you could crop off the slight vignetting to get a larger than 1080p image. Lots of Sphera collaborations. Bit of veiling flare as well. Definitely um, a stronger veiling flare that doesn't go away as quickly. But decent detail for wide open without an optical corrector. Good field of view. Dropping down to 2.8 and dropping filter. Still got lots of veiling flare and sphero collaborations, uh, but definitely some detail in there, which is good. The doubler um, helps when you don't have an optical corrector. It corrects some of the image. 
uh, but you still get lots of Sphera collaborations um, without using an optical converter. Dropping down to F4, dropping filter. Lots of, uh, a lot of low contrast there still. Um, the veiling flare is a big issue um, whenever you use the doubler. So that's probably why we're getting a fair bit of veiling flare here. Sharpness is good. Dropping down to F8. So I've still got Veiling Flare at F8 because we're using the doubler to cover. Clears up a little bit as you zoom out. This is a particularly difficult uh, test for the lens with lights with a window light and a panel light pinging the lens. So uh, this is sort of worst case scenario. So that's that one in Super 35. Test 5 Part 2, this is the budget adapter image quality again with a basic pass-through adapter, this time in Super 16 mode. Uh, this is the worst mode to use with no optical corrector um, because it is very milky. This is correctly focused and correctly back focused. Um, it just hazes and gauzes a lot uh, when not using an optical corrector and not being able to use the doubler. Um, You could put the doubler in on Super 16 mode and get a bump in image quality, but at the sacrifice of uh, field of view on the wide end. But if all you need was uh, the tele end of the lens, um, then you could bump in the doubler and get a slightly uh, cleaner image. So that's definitely an option if you're shooting from the back of the hall, but you still get the spherical collaborations and everything. It's better off to use a converter if you're going to shoot Super 16 or Micro Four Thirds and um, get better image quality without using the doubler. Dropping down to f2.8, slightly sharper, slightly less milky. Lots and lots of flaring. Uh, through all the light sources. 
definitely not quite usable yet. Dropping down F4, dropping filter, dropping ISO. Definitely some more sharpness there, and the spherical aberrations have cleaned up a fair bit. It's definitely uh, usable at F4 without the optical converter, uh, but that's very restrictive being stuck at uh, an F4 iris all the time, or better. Testing the doubler at four. Good sharpness. Lots of reach. Lots of veiling flare because we're using the doubler for that part. But you can get very, very close using the doubler. Double off and dropping down to F8. Still got veiling flare from when we were wide open with this lens without the optical converter, um, but sharpness is very good now, which is typical of F8 on these lenses. Um, you can obviously get a cleaner image and a better image using an optical converter much earlier in the iris range. Um, you know, you can get a very usable image at 2.8 with an optical corrector. So that is the image results without an optical corrector in Super 16. Test 6, minimum focus test and macro mode. Uh, these tests are with an optical correcting adapter. First test, Super 16 capture mode. We are on the Canon J21 by. So the screwdriver is the minimum focusing distance. The marked on the lens minimum focusing distance is 0.8 meters or 2.62 feet. Um, but the actual distance measured from the sensor plane to the screwdriver where we are focused is actually 1.05 meters. So uh, with all these lenses, when we're adapting them, it's approximately um, 0.2 meters that it adds to the minimum focusing distance. It adds a little bit, but it's, oh, it's really not too bad um, with that little extra added. We get a little bit of haze and softening at the end of the zoom range, um, but bring it back 10% and you get good sharpness wide open.
This tidies up a bit at uh, when we drop down to 2.8, but we're going to drop down to 4. Dropping down to f8, and we've got excellent minimum focusing distance image quality. Very sharp. Much more useful depth of field um, for very close up work. Definitely better, definitely substantially better than non-optical corrected version. We'll come off the tripod now and do the macro test. We are wide open on the lens and we're at the minimum focus on the focus barrel and then we switch in the macro, dropping a filter for exposure and we're getting a bit closer and we can and that's touching the lens hood you can get very close and there's still a bit of macro uh, switch range left so you could get closer than this if needed So that's a very good uh, macro performance. Testing at f8 as well. That's the image quality you get at f8. Test 7, minimum focus and macro mode, part 2, uh, Super 35 capture this time using an optical correcting adapter. This is Super 35 mode with the Canon j 21 by uh, SD lens using an optical corrector, Super 35 4K. Uh, this is with the doubler off at minimum focusing distance. And we'll engage the doubler to get coverage and we are wide open f1.8 on the lens and same thing here the minimum focusing distance and uh, marked on the lens and actual distance are the same as before so 0 0.8 meters for um, marked on the lens and actual distance is uh, 1.05 meters the macro distance is different on this test because we're using the uh, doubler to get coverage on the Super 35 sensor. Dropping down to f8 for image quality and putting in some gain and that's good image quality. Since we have the double engaged, we have less macro ability. Uh, so dropping some filters, going back to wide open, and we have to be much further away, uh, approximately 40 centimeters to the sensor plane, or 1.31 foot. So we have to be much further away when using the doubler um, in macro mode.
and testing f8 for macro quality at a high f-stop. You definitely lose out on that very close macro quality uh, when using the doubler and Super 35 mode. The tests for minimum focusing and macro are the same distance and same results uh, for when not using the optical correcting adapter. So uh, refer to the image quality test for not using an optical adapter uh, for the image quality that you can expect. Thanks for watching and if you require any extra details drop a comment below and I'll answer any questions you have.